One of his longtime friends and colleagues said an Irish lion is gone. The sudden death today of former finance minister Jim Flaherty at age 64 sent shockwaves from Ottawa. The House of Commons fell silent and almost immediately the tributes began. Jim will be sorely missed, not only by his many friends on both sides of the House, I know particularly his friends in this caucus, among whom he was held unanimously in great, a combination of great respect and affection. But he will also be missed by the countless thousands of Canadians that he devoted himself to and whom he helped during his long and successful career in public life. Flaherty was one of Canada's longest serving finance ministers. On Bay Street today, he was remembered for his steady leadership during the financial crisis. And there were many stories about his jovial personality and self-deprecating sense of humor. We'll get to all sides of Jim Flaherty tonight, beginning with our national affairs editor, Chris Hall. Paramedics rushed to Flaherty's Ottawa condo shortly before 12.30. There was nothing they could do. Flaherty apparently suffered a massive heart attack. And as word spread to Parliament Hill, disbelief. I have not heard that. I have not heard that at all. This is, this is the first I've heard of it, my goodness. Sorry. There's general agreement that the House will now suspend. Question period was suspended. Political rivalries forgotten as MPs shared words of condolence. Astonished Conservative MPs then gathered in their caucus room that sense of disbelief still heavy in the air. Prime Minister Harper confirmed the worst. I learned a short while ago that our colleague, my partner and my friend, Jim Flaherty, has passed away suddenly today. Flaherty was many things in addition to being a formidable politician, a hockey star who attended Princeton University on scholarship, fiercely proud of his Irish heritage, evidenced by the green ties he habitually wore. He wasn't a big man, but skill and toughness made him a standout on the ice as a lawyer and as a politician, first in Ontario and then as finance minister in the Harper cabinet. Oh, it's just so bloody sad. I remember being in a room with Jim and we sat one night and had a couple of beers and he looked like a little altar boy. He was so proud to be in Rome. Um, and sorry. Today, his political opponents recalled Flaherty's good humor and friendships forged across the partisan divide. He always had that impish, almost leprechaun style uh, of his Irish heritage, which, of which he was so proud. Uh, we're very, very sad for the loss of, uh, of a great Canadian. Jim Flaherty was uh, an extraordinarily dedicated public servant. It's a devastating loss, and he was a very fine man. I disagreed with policies. That doesn't mean I wasn't very, very fond of him. Ontario's Conservative leader Tim Hudak called Flaherty a mentor. You saw the man. You saw the huge heart. You saw what he's made of. Sad reality is gone. Never had a chance to say. You never have a chance to say goodbye. And thanks. Flaherty spent eight years as Harper's finance minister, putting him front and center in guiding Canada through the 2008 recession. Since the financial crisis of, of 08, Canada's stature on the international stage increased enormously because Canada navigated its way through things so well. And, and in many respects, at G20 meetings of finance ministers, uh, Jim Flaherty was the representative of Canada. And I think on the international stage, he also represented Canada remarkably well. It wasn't in Flaherty's nature to spend. It was against his political credo to rack up deficits. But as he told me in a sit-down interview in February, he knew it had to be done. And more importantly than running the big deficits, we got the money out the door, which a lot of countries didn't, including the United States. And it made a difference in the country. And we never had double-digit inflation, and we came out of the recession quicker than any other Western country. And then 18 months ago, a rare and painful skin condition began to take a toll, frequently leaving Flaherty drained and hobbled. Yet he stayed on, determined to balance the books, until his sudden resignation three weeks ago. His colleagues understood the sacrifices he made. I think it's a, it's a cautionary tale for all of us in public life when you're going to, like he was, 100 miles an hour, year after year after year, with such massive pressure. To suddenly slow down, it's, uh, it can be, uh, I imagine it can be very difficult. 
Friends say Jim Flaherty had been feeling well since leaving finance, Peter, and planning his return to private life, plans that will now never be realized. He leaves his wife, Ontario MPP Christine Elliott, and their triplet sons. Former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney was also a close friend, and he was helping Flaherty transition to his career in the private sector. We spoke earlier this evening. So Jim Flaherty, you knew him a long time. Yes, I did. Uh, and long life with him and he was a great man and a good man he was both a great politician and a great father and husband and, but also a good man and uh, he had a good heart loved canada worked for canada uh, and uh, it's a great tragedy that he won't see the end of of, uh, of it all and the way it could have been for him and his kids and christine and, but uh, life is what it is there is a cruelty to it, isn't there? It really because is. all that time in public service, yeah. he finally decides to step down. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, he's gone. And I can tell you that, because uh, I know a little bit about it, is that um, they were knocking on his door big time. And he would have had a marvelous retirement, you know, where he could have continued to contribute, but done so uh, much more relaxed and uh, much more agreeable. Well, you know, you eat a lot of hamburgers and hot dogs at 3 o'clock in the morning in this job. And uh, Jim did more than his share, apart from the fact that he had the international part of it for many years, uh, where he was probably viewed as the best finance minister in the world, uh, which is pretty good. As I said to him, for a guy from Whitby, it's, it's not bad, you know. And he thought that um, he loved it. He just loved that part of it. You know, on a day like this, people, you know, tend to kind of determine what the legacy yeah. was, uh, you know, for his time in politics and especially this yeah. stretch as finance minister. What's the legacy? His legacy, in my judgment, is the leadership and the stability that he provided through one of the great economic crises in Canadian history, 208, 209, 210. He was there at the ready and uh, he provided, as I say, the vision and the leadership and the strength to see us through. You know, he told me about a year before, not even a year before that crisis hit, that he couldn't think of a single uh, situation where he would break his personal beliefs of no deficit yeah. and have a deficit. Yeah. So then within a year, he became the biggest deficit yeah. maker in, in Canadian yeah, history. Right. But what does that say about him that he made that turn? Well, because he's a pragmatic guy and he saw what was coming down the track and he said, um, you know what? I have to change my, my mind. It's one thing in politics, as I've learned, Peter, and I, I made the same mistakes myself. You say, well, in opposition, I'm never going to do this. And then all of a sudden, you're confronted by reality. And reality is the well-being of your country. And if that requires you to change course, then I hope we all have the intelligence to do it. And he did. It takes courage to do that. And he did. Going to miss that green time. Yeah, I, I love this green tie. <laughs> of course, you know my background. <laughs> I, I, I'm with the green tie all the time. He was a, he was a, he was a great guy, a great man, and, ma and made a difference. He made a difference for Canada, beneficially. There was actually a stream of friendliness and regard, not the normal waters of politics, flowing by Jim Flaherty as he wrapped up in his long, blended and successful public career. As Mr. Flaherty announced his leave from all the tumults of politics just a few weeks back, he was getting favorable notices for his tenure as finance minister from all around. He'd given some signs of illness, but certainly none of imminent peril. So today, it was an emphatic shock that so sadly soon, after he had placed work behind him, he so swiftly died. From Ottawa, where he stood as the captain of the nation's economy, the news came today and all were shocked at the cruel suddenness of the event, felt grief at its substance and esteem and affection towards the man himself. Prime Minister Harper lost a real friend and a most able minister, and the PM's words and tone told us as much. In an embrace of profession, this was a very likable man, not brittle with ego, never loud, imperious, or self-important. I met him informally only once myself. He was waiting, I think, for his son's hockey game to be over, and he was approachable, funny. He had a good few digs at CBC, at me. It was fun. He was fun, which is a very large virtue. 
He was a friendly, natural, and genial man in a trade, politics, that usually drives geniality and friendliness to take shelter. He had a way about him that in a now somewhat bypassed idiom we used to call the manners of a gentleman. He was also a man of heart, something more outstanding now that we know that his own last months must have been such a burden. For example, he looked on the dismal circus of Rob Ford and unlike almost everyone else, didn't explode with superior scorn or smug dismissal, only very emotionally noted he was the family's friend and how sad it all made him. It was so unpolitical, this wave of real feeling, this public demonstration of quiet charity and sadness towards another public figure. Yeah, I am close with the family. I am... That tormented moment was worth a hundred question periods. A lot of humanity in those hesitations. A little touch of nature, as Shakespeare reminded us. Mr. Flaherty was moderate. He played the roles assigned him. He labored with equal diligence and apparent content under Mr. Harris and Stephen Harper. He applied his intelligence and industry to his own tasks. He was not one of the warriors waging the daily sham battles of the partisans and the hacks. He was a steward of his own behavior as well as of the nation's finances. A cheerful man in an angry business, brutally deprived the gradual farewell of time with family and friends after an arduous and demanding career. The prime minister saw him as a friend. The whole nation regarded him and his family own our condolences. For the national, I'm Rex Murphy.